Hi friends, what can be done from an old and even not working computer power supply? In fact, a lot of things. And in a few videos, I will show you many different designs from the details of the old power supply. No matter how funny it sounds, but today we will make the power supply from the power supply. In amateur radio practice, low power switching power supplies are used very often. So I recently needed a 5 volt power supply. Usually I buy such power supplies in Chinese online stores, but 5 volt ones run out pretty quickly. Of course, if you don't want to be bothered, you can go to the store and just buy, for example, a phone charger. They also give out 5 volts, but more interesting is to do it yourself. Eventually, every homemade product is an invaluable experience which you can't buy for money. Homemade boards can be good, but their appearance can't always be presentable. Do you want homemade PCB look like a factory one? Then order the printed circuit boards from our partner GLC PCB. Very high factory quality is guaranteed at the lowest prices, starting from $2 for 10 pieces. Boards are made in any quantity in the shortest terms. The link to the GLC PCB website will be found in the description. The power supply I needed intended to work round the clock under load. Cheap charging for phones in this mode will not work for a long time. Expensive ones also don't guarantee, but homemade work can be done wisely and there is nothing to save on because it is done for you and not for sale. Ramaging around the garage, I found two inoperative 400 watt power supplies from the FSP. These power supplies are pretty old but well assembled. The standby mode for such sources is based on only one FSD M311 chip. We can find technical documentation for this chip. First of all, I partially redraw the circuit of the power source, but as it turned out in vain because in the net there are complete circuits of such power supplies. The only thing left for me was to compare them with the circuit that I have, to finish everything that is missing, so in the end, it turned out such a circuit. What can be said about this power supply? It is a single cycle and provides high stabilization of the output voltage through the use of a precision TL431 reference voltage source. This microcircuit, due to connected resistive divider, sets the output voltage. The power supply has short circuit protection and soft start. That is, it's a very good power source. Since there is a circuit, it remains only to extract the necessary components from the computer power supply and most importantly be sure to check them for good condition. We can check all components except the microcircuit using a transistor tester or multimeter. By the way, the TL431 not located near the standby mode circuit, like the other components, but on the control board of the unit, next to the PWM controller. Next, it was necessary to develop a printed circuit board. I specifically made it big enough because some components of the power supply will heat up under load. So that they don't heat neighboring components, I decided to make the board larger. The place where I will apply this unit, the dimensions aren't critical. The output current of the power source can reach up to 2 amperes. However, in the end, we will check all this. Power will be about 10 watts. Let's go back to the FSDM311 chip. We can see at the datasheet that, based on the microchip, it is possible to construct sources with a power of up to 13 watts. Also, everything necessary for the operation of the microchip is already contained in it. This is a frequency setting circuit, a power transistor and everything else. The chip operates at a fixed frequency of 67 kHz. Inside, it has an output cascade based on a field effect transistor and a current sensor on the basis of which the protection is built. That is, we don't need to make an additional protection system. All of this is in the chip itself. We just need to build a feedback system or stabilization and feed power to the chip. The circuit consists of an input part with a rectifier and a smoothing electrolyte, a power transformer, a PWM chip with a power switching transistor, an output part with a rectifier, smoothing capacitors and a choke, and finally a feedback system based on a standard PC817 optocoupler and a reference voltage source TL431, two resistors that set the output voltage, in our case 5 volts. 
This is a single-ended circuit, simple flyback converter. The good thing is that we don't need to reel up the transformer. It is taken ready from the old power supply. It remains only to solder all the components and check the operation of the unit. The circuit has a self-feeding system. After the unit has started, the specified winding forms of the power for the PWM chip, then this voltage is rectified and supplied to the microchip. In the microchip, strapping is a Zinier diode, a pair of high-resistance resistors that are needed to start the chip at the initial moment of time and a snapboard chain to protect the chip from surges arising in mains winding of the transformer. The Zinier diodes of the old power supply as well as several resistors in the SMD version. I said the usual ones. As already said, all the necessary components are on the computer unit itself, except for the input part, because the standby circuit is powered by the main rectifier of the computer power supply unit. We can take out this part too, but capacious electrolytes will take up a lot of space. In principle, it makes no sense to use them, so we need to find diodes for the rectifier and capacitor. Any diodes with a current of about 1 ampere and with a reverse voltage of at least 400 volts are suitable. For example, 1N4007. The electrolytic capacitor must be for 400 volts and with a capacitance from 6.8 to 22 microfarads. I took such a capacitor from the old ballast board of an energy-saving lamp. Transformer On the board of the computer power supply unit, there are three transformers. A power one, which is larger. Second, which controls the power transistors and, as a rule, located in the middle. And transformer of the standby mode which is that what we need. Almost all such power supplies have the same standby mode transformer, and this board is specifically designed for this transformer. If you decide to put another, no sure that will work. Probably it will be necessary to change the location of the terminals and phasing of the windings. The power supply is assembled. It remains only to check it. To check unit, we connect in series with one of the main wires in incandescent lamp of 220 volts, 10 to 15 watts. If you assemble the power supply on this board, did everything correctly, and all components are working, the power supply will start and will work perfectly without any problems. You don't need to fix anything additionally. After turning on the unit, the lamp may blink slightly. This is due to F charge of the capacitor. Next, we check the output voltage. It practically shouldn't differ from 5 volts, but only if the divider uses resistors with a tolerance of 1%. It is very advisable not to solder the PWM chip during assembly, but to use the mounting socket as you can't be sure that the chip will get working. If everything works, the socket can be removed and the chip can be soldered directly. Without an output load, the power source doesn't heat up. Only the output resistors, which in this case are the load, can heat up. This is normal. LED is an indicator of work. With this transformer, you can get in addition to 5 volts, also 12 to 16 if you use whole secondary winding. You can also regulate the output voltage if the divider is replaced by a variable resistor. Now it's time to test the power source. With the output voltage, I think everything is clear. It is about 5 volts. I will check the current and output power. As a load, USB electronic load with a current and voltage indicator. The first multimeter will show the input voltage or mains voltage. The second will show the current consumption from mains. Knowing the input and output characteristics, we can understand what efficiency the power supply has. We load the power supply with a current of 2 amps. As you can see, the output voltage is about 4.8 volts, that is, it drops slightly. But it's nothing. Power at the output of the power supply is 9.6 watt. Current consumption from mains is 63 milliamps. Voltage is 224. Therefore, the power consumed from mains is about 14 watts. The efficiency of the power supply is 70%. This, of course, isn't super for a switching power supply, but these are real values and not what some unscrupulous sellers claim. In addition, it is necessary to take into account the measurement error, losses in the wires and on the load resistor. My load resistor has less resistance and losses about 0.3 watts, a trifle, but nevertheless. 
Now let's check the protection against short circuit. I close the output of the power supply shortly. As you can see, nothing happened. The unit didn't explode. The protection works. If the short circuit is eliminated, the work of the unit goes on. You think it's worth it? In my case, yes. I didn't spend a dime on this unit. In general, on a separate board, you can assemble a circuit for standby mode using components from almost any computer power supply and use it for your needs. Naturally, it's easier to buy the necessary power supply and not be petty. I understand this very well. And as a rule, I buy such blocks, but sometimes it's worth moving my hands and brain. At maximum current values, the unit operates without any problem. But of course, we have some heating of the transformer, PWM chip, the output rectifier and the chalk. But in the device in which it is planned to install this source, large currents are needed. There it will be loaded with currents of 1 to 1.3 amps maximum. You will find all the necessary links, including a link to the project archive with a printed circuit board in the description. Please don't forget to rate this video and subscribe to my Instagram. If you have questions related to electronics, you can ask them in our official group. Well, on this I say goodbye. Until next time. With you as always was Kassian TV.